If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. Logical, nature spirit, cryptid or entity, or other spooky occurrences in woods and outdoors, what's your experience? One morning my girlfriend and I were laying in her bed on a cold morning. We didn't have work or school that day because it had snowed. She lived out in the middle of nowhere, like no neighbor for a mile nowhere. Well I hear someone right outside the window say get down, they're going to be able to see you if you don't get down. So of course this startled me and I turn around and see a guy and three dogs right outside walking toward the garage door. So I grab my handgun and go to meet them at the door and find out why they were there. So in those 10 seconds I get outside and no one was there. Right outside our window there were shoe prints and paw prints in the fresh snow. I tracked them down the back of the property and after about 100 yards or so there were only paw prints. I looked over to my left 10 to 15 yards there were very similar paw prints that looked like they had come from the forest towards the house. So I tracked those up to the house and then shoe prints appeared about 25 yards from the house. So I followed them to see if maybe they had gone out the front of the property but there were none. To this day I'm not really sure what happened or what was outside our window. When I was living in western NSW, I was out exploring the area when I saw a kangaroo with unusual markings, it had a white face. A while later I mentioned what I'd seen at the local pub and everyone got quiet then quickly changed the subject. I find out later what I describe was considered a bad omen in the local dream time, and I totally believe it. It gets a little odder. It wasn't a totally white face, it was like a white skull marking. It still had color on the ears, around the eyes, mouth etc. At the time we were years into a bad drought, and it wasn't uncommon to find native animals dead in deep mud, presumably after attempting to access water. For some reason when I saw the root I had a mental picture of it face planting into some mud, which had then dried leaving the unusual markings. In a split second it makes sense, but when I sat and thought about it I knew that it wasn't mud but actual markings. When I was a teenager, I had something weird happen to me. It started when a friend was looking at me strangely and blurted that there was a woman following me. I looked all around and he was like, no, she's here, but she's not here. I asked him to explain but then he was laughing it off, saying he must just be crazy. Soon after, things started moving in my room on their own. The little metal ornamental pieces on my daybed would randomly launch into the air, scrunchies would be thrown at my head, it was the 90s, don't judge. Nothing that ever hurt, it was just annoying. It happened so often that I would bitch at it when it was messing with me. It also did this to two of my friends. One of my friends it didn't like though, she was more of a friend slash enemy anyway, but I'll get to that in a minute. One night, I was in bed with the lights off ready to sleep. My bedroom door was closed and I could hear the TV that my aunt was watching in the living room. I felt someone sit down on the end of my bed and heard a woman's voice say my name. I sat up all happy, thinking that my mom got off early from work and snuck into my room to say goodnight. It wasn't my mom. I remember being scared shitless, but I don't remember anything else. My next memory is waking up that next morning. A few days later, one of my good friends and my other friend were at my house after school. We were watching TV in the living room, then decided to go to my room to hang out. My friend said she was thirsty and went to the kitchen to get some juice while my other friend and I went to my room. A minute later, we heard my friend scream from the kitchen. We ran in there to find her cowering on the floor, crying with three scratch marks on her cheek. One of the scratches even broke the skin, and there was a tiny bit of blood. My other friend was asking her what happened, but she just stayed on the floor all freaked out, but I knew. I don't know what came over me, but I lost my shit. I started yelling at my invisible house guest. I don't remember everything I said, but it boiled down to, this is my house and you're not welcome here. My friends were on the floor looking up at me yelling at nothing, and what's really weird is they didn't look at me like I was crazy. They were scared. Later, they told me that they saw some sort of big shadow behind me while I was yelling, then it just sort of turned around and left. I lived in that house for years after that and never had anything else happen. Alright well ill shitpost I'm feeling risky tonight. And by shitpost I mean probably embarrass myself as an atheist. Basically I was in a graveyard when I was 17 with my girlfriend, I know cool right? What awesome teenagers. We were both into the paranormal and I convinced her to come with me to a graveyard to see if we could stir up paranormal activity as I was, and still am, kinda half and half on it. There was a lot of putzing around and honestly we got into a lot of bickering back and forth for no reason. I guess we were both kind of unnerved. She was scared. I was annoyed since there wasn't any reason to be. Honestly it was one of the calmest places I've ever been. However my heart jumped out of my chest for a moment when I had to turn a corner. For what couldn't have even been more than a second, I saw the stark image of a large, 
grungy looking wolf with piercing yellow eyes and fangs. It was akin to something from the game Bloodborne. Like this thing was fucking large. Nearly my size almost. It made me feel tiny. I honestly don't even know if I trust my own senses. It could have merely been a trick of the shadows or anything, but in my mind it was very clear. And I've never forgotten those yellow eyes. I'm incredibly sensitive to the other realm of things, to the point where for a long time I had a guardian spirit who'd stand in the way of the entities that could really fuck me up, though if I'm not actively practicing it lays dormant. But I live in an area where it's pretty rich with spirits, entities, really anything you can imagine. I had a lot of trouble when I first moved up here because they wouldn't stop bothering me lots of different things but mainly nature entities and spirits that didn't necessarily have a form more than an aura which made sense because well the house I lived in had just been made in the forest and stuff was destroyed. They'd follow me around for a while and while it scared the shit out of me to see them and feel their presence which was very angry after a while of appeasement the angry feeling went away. Now there's just what I call house spiders. They are these black shadowy spider-like entities that just kinda scurry around places considered homes or hearths. I believe they are there for a reason. One of the people I know in the area has mentioned that they're common and connected to the culture of the area, he, and many people who live here, are Ojibwe. I am not, so that's my experience with anything animal-like. I used to work a night shift the town over at the cherry processing plant cleaning and sterilizing the plant lines. It was pretty physically demanding and I would always drive home exhausted and sleepy. One night I was having a hard time staying awake on the drive home. The night like many in the area had produced a thick fog making visibility more than 5 car lengths basically impossible. So here I am having a hard time keeping my eyes open driving in fog at night and I turn at a familiar tight turn in front of a farmer's field, all field except for a single spindly tree at the edge of the road. When I got close to the turn my headlights began reflecting of two massive eyes. Out by the side of the road in the middle of nowhere is this massive pitch black dog. Looked kind of like a bigger than usual mastiff. It didn't make a single move except to calmly just watch me drive by. Before I could even process what had happened the turn was done and I realized I was holding my breath. My hands were shaking from some inexplicable burst of fear and adrenaline. I slowed way down and made sure I drove as safe as possible the rest of the way home. It was only until I got home that I remembered, for all you Harry Potter fans, the story of the Black Dog. An old British Isles fable who is a portent of death for those who see him. Bear in mind that I only thought of the story after I had gotten home. For some instinctual reason my body responded with the most fear I have felt in my life. I put in my two weeks notice and drove like a wide awake grandma for the next two weeks. I saw a wolf, a huge wolf when I lived in Ohio. I was working late and it was close to 3 AM. I was driving home and one road has woods and the river on one side and a big subdivision on the other side. I came down the other side of a small hill in the road and saw something headed from the woods toward the road. It was moving so fast, and didn't stop when it hit the road. I slammed on my brakes and barely missed it. But it was taller than the front of my minivan hood. Like, it actually made eye contact with me, as it ran in front of my van. Its eyes just seemed creepy. But you know I was scared at the size of this thing, so who knows. Everyone made fun of me and told me, no such thing as wolves in Ohio. I checked around and there was no other sightings. But here is the thing. I would have sworn it was a freaking werewolf at the time of the sighting. When I got home, I was like, I think I just saw some sort of werewolf thing crossing from the woods to a subdivision. No sighting since then either. So you know how America's national parks get closed down when the government shuts down. Well here's my story from when I was the only person inside of Yellowstone National Park, at 1am. I'm lucky enough to have two properties, on opposite sides of the park, which means I use the park as a highway, it's amazing and you people need to respect the park rules. I get special access to the park during a shot down since the road in the park reduces my travel time by about 7 hours. Anyways the government had that shut down a few years back and I decided it was time to spend a weekend at my cabin. I got off work at around 10.30pm, packed and left for the night. Nobody in the park, pitch black out, no cell service out in the wild with incredible stars. Around midnight I have my first wildlife encounter, an owl swooping down through my headlights into the dark. Remembering that's an omen for death, I thought to myself that suckix. Creepy. Then an hour of overthinking the owl, I go down a slope turn to see the most beautiful fox, just my sitting in the middle of my side of the road, staring at me. I stopped my car with the headlights on it and just watched it sit there he was not bothered by me, not I was of him. Remind you. Middle of the most wild area in America with nobody around at 1am. After about 20 seconds of staring at each other, 
he stood up and walked down the road, so I slowly followed. He trots about 50 yards down the road, the curved slope, and steps aside to watch me pass. I shit you not, looked up as I was passing by, looked me in the eyes and he fucking winked at me. That all happened over the course of maybe 2 2.5 minutes. I did not sleep that night. I was walking in the park one evening, watched the sun go down over the water, stargazed a bit and started to head out, a little after nightfall. I was thinking about all the worst case scenarios, like I usually do, when I'm alone at night, just to be prepared, when I suddenly heard a woman give off a blood-curdling shriek. I stopped dead in my tracks, like Link when one of those zombies scream in The Legend of Zelda. I was literally paralyzed with fear for a few seconds. A minute later I heard it again, but it was distant enough that I wasn't too terrified. I didn't know what to do, so I just stayed where I was, and continued to listen. Was it really a girl, or some kind of weird animal call? If it's a girl being attacked, should I help her, or run for my life? Then literally 20 feet from me, I heard the scream come out of the woods, and that answered that. I literally ran as fast as I could back to my car. I drove around to the front parking lot, rolled down the window, and listened, to see if there was any indication that this was a human scream, and find out whether or not I should call the cops. I heard it like five more times, before making up my mind that it was an animal of some kind. Sure enough, as soon as I got home, I found the scream of the red fox on YouTube, and it was a perfect match, which obviously made me feel a lot better. Still the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced though. Me and my two best friends were walking around friend one's neighborhood at 3 in the morning, it was summer of junior year so we felt badass being out that late and we are talking and having a good time. Eventually, as many a late night extended conversations do, we start to talk about the paranormal. Friend 2 talks about how he was on a hunting trip and lost a couple hours time, friend 1 talks about ghost he has seen, and my turn comes up in the rotation, so I start telling them about my brother's skinwalker story, he went with a Native American friend to a reservation, camped in the wilderness, bad idea. Well as soon as I cap my story off, friend one jokes and says well you know how you attract a skinwalker? Talk about it, deny it, fear it, that's what feeds them. Thoroughly heebie jeebied at this point, we decide to turn back and start the two mile walk home, and change the subject to something for lighthearted. At this point it's 4 in the morning, neighborhood dogs stirring and growl as we walk by, with an occasion yelp from an overzealous watchdog, but no human activity whatsoever. Me and my friends are all stopped in the middle of the road, mid-sentence, kind of like when there's an awkward pause in a conversation, but we can't figure out why, then it hits us. Complete silence all around. Not a stick breaking, not a mosquito buzzing, piercing silence. Then we all hear it. Help me, please help me help me. I couldn't process the words, didn't process the words. By the time I realized what was going on, I was in a full panic sprint, my two friends sprinting right alongside me. We must have ran for a mile straight, friend one crying, friend two wide-eyed and terrified. We all slow down, try to make sense of what happened. The voice. I get shivers thinking about it. It wasn't quite animal, not quite human. Raspy, like a lung patient, but piercing. What I can tell you is that voice taps something primal inside us. The decision to run wasn't made by me, but by evolution. I'm an EMT, I'm used to adrenaline but this was sheer, animal, prey panic. We all pause for a minute, to catch our breaths, and we start trying to reason and laugh it all off. I'm a big boy, friend 2 is a linebacker and friend 3 was in Marine ROTC, so we weren't the group to be scared easily, we muse to ourselves. Probably an old drunk or dog. Running again. Whatever is was it caught up to us, knew the turns we took. Those same words help me help me please we sprinted the rest of the way to his house, all of probably 5 minutes, stopping only to survey what makes this so fucked in my mind. One intersection catacorner from friend 1's house, parked in the middle of the intersection is a black Chevy truck, lights on, interior lights on, engine running, all four doors open, no one in sight. We looked around, called out for a brief time, then went into friend 1's house. His dog, a Rottweiler, sat at his front door growling the rest of the night until the sun came up, while we huddled back to back to back in his room. In the morning the truck was gone, and that's why, until now, damn it, I haven't talked about skinwalkers since. Here's the spookiest thing I ever witnessed. I'm a scout chief, and three years ago we were out with our cubs for the summer camp in a beautiful old house in the Apennini, Italy. The house was deep in the woods, and there was a little farm in front of it with a lot of animals. Horses, pigs, sheep and whatnot. We also spot a fox and a deer in the nearby forest while hiking. Needless to say the city kids were going nuts with all of the farm and wild animals. Along with us for the camp came a man, 
Bruno, who is the founder of our scouts group. He's 75 plus and still rocking it. He's a sort of mystical figure with a number of legends surrounding him, all of which involve him having connections with the supernatural, like seeing our patron saint, Saint Romualdo, hearing voices in the churches at night whom, he says, belong to Mary, being able to curse people, and all around spooky Catholic mystical stuff. An amazing guy, don't get me wrong, but he likes to tell these stories to kids and other chiefs scaring everyone. One night, after sending the kids to bed, me and another chief, Nicola, were sitting out of the house to smoke a cigarette after a long day. It was a quiet and clear night, with the usual forest at night sounds accompanying it, wind, some cicadas, the rustling of small animals. All of a sudden, at about 00.30, all and I mean all of the animals around us start going insane making a lot of noise. We're talking all of the farm animals screaming their lungs out, cicadas and insects being the loudest they can, and even the farm dogs howling. This goes on for about 10 to 20 seconds, even prompting some other chiefs who were about to go to bed to bolt downstairs to see what was going on, until as suddenly as the shouting started, all of the animals shut up. And the night went to dead silent. The thing that scared me the most was how even the Danby insects were perfectly synchronized with the farm and forest animals. First thing we think about is an earthquake is coming, this was a couple years after the disastrous quake events in Toscana and Emilia, so we were pretty sensible to the topic. So we stay on high alert, equip ourselves and be prepared to wake the kids up should the noise start once again. Luckily the kids' rooms were directly on the exit so we decided it wasn't necessary to preemptively wake them up, as most of them were already awake because of the animals. So we wait on edge. A full hour and then two hours pass, and no noise nor quake happens. It must have been something else to scare the animals, we conclude, and so we finally go to bed. Now, Nicola and I slept in the same room with Bruno, who had gone to bed at the same time as the kids. We enter the room to find Bruno sleep talking in his bed and being really agitated, moving left and right. He said mostly inconsequential stuff and noises, but there were some no. S and grunts and such, like he was having one of those nightmares in which you're fighting someone or are running away or similar. Tired as I was, it doesn't stop me from falling asleep as soon as I touch the pillow. The following morning, we go downstairs to have breakfast before waking up the kids. We're all there talking about how scary the forest looked past night and yet how beautiful it was in the morning, when Bruno enters the kitchen. Nicola hands him a cup of coffee and cheerily asks him hey we heard you having a bad dream tonight, you seemed angry at someone, who were you arguing with? At which Bruno answers immediately oh, with the devil. Now. Knowing Bruno and how he likes to revel in the urban legends and rumors around him, I guarantee that's the standard answer he would give when asked a question like that. But the timing of the whole thing scared the shit out of me. I went the whole camp without really being able shrug off the idea that fucking Satan decided to visit this house in the woods at night to do Satan shit or something, and that the animals were reacting to his presence or something like that. Because I assure you the way the animals went on screaming their lungs out for 20 seconds was just terrifying. One of those unexpected situations where you just cannot react, and your whole body freezes to listen carefully. Maybe it wasn't the goddamn devil, but something was definitely giving them, and me, the scare of their life. This story is long, in fact I made an amateur film based loosely on it, and not for the faint of heart. It's probably exactly what Op was looking for, but be cautioned, you will never be able to unread this. By far the most creepy and terrifying thing I've experienced to date. My good friend Paul and I, both about 17, were headed to a nearby mountainous rainforest to spend the day foraging for mushrooms. We both had a couple of seasons worth of shrooming under our belt, having gone several times to this exact area in prior years, and a few times already in that same winter. After waking up early and spending about three hours traveling to this mountain range, we began into the rainforest the same way we'd always done. Our normal route was along an old, disused railway track that skirted about halfway up the mountain slope, it was good to have this flat ground to walk on, as we got deeper into the woods. After walking a while, we decided it was time to delve into the surrounding bush and start our mushroom hunt. We would normally go downhill from the train track when it was time to veer, as it was generally more moist the further down the slope you got equals more mushrooms. However, this time for some reason, we decided to try our luck on the other side of the track, and started walking uphill away from our walking track. We didn't have to walk very far from the path before the landscape started changing. The higher portions of this mountainside were drier, and started resembling a sparse pine forest as opposed to the normally damp rainforest that most of the terrain grew. The area was fairly open, and not filled with undergrowth or overgrowth. We split up a bit, to spread our efforts, still within earshot of each other, but not within eyesight. My attention was focused on the ground, constantly surveying for mushrooms. After walking up a small raised mound for better vantage, 
I noticed something strange on the ground, just on the other side of this mound I'd walked up. It was a man-made construction, that was for sure, but still to this day I cannot work out exactly its purpose, or why it was there. The best description I could give would be a large guinea pig, hamster, hatch. It was large and rectangular, tilde 2 meters by 1 meter, but very flat and low to the ground, probably less than 30 centimeters high. On one end was an entry hole, and the entire structure was covered in corrugated iron and tin, and it looked like it had been there while judging by the moss and leaf litter that was encrusting the roof and walls. I stood shocked and confused, trying to evaluate this structure as best I could. It was in the middle of a quite large ditch. That mound I had climbed before? Just part of the surrounding rim that cratered this ditch, where this structure was in the middle, already I had thoughts of terror running through my head. A human could definitely fit inside this structure, could this be some hobo's home? Or perhaps something more sinister? I still can't quite place the purpose of this hatch. As much as I wish it, the story doesn't end there. My shock paralysis at coming across this thing in this ditch was soon interrupted. I felt something heavy, and wet, land right on the top of my head. Before I could reach to touch my head, it was already oozing down my face and neck. To describe this material, it was thick like tree sap, but black as pitch, like tar. I'd never seen anything like it before, and seeing it on my hand was when I first felt the urge to panic. I looked up, to brave a glance at the source of this strange black substance, and that's when I knew I had to get out of there. All of the trees growing around this ditch clearing had massive lobs of this stuff dripping steadily from their upper branches. I could see these masses of black stuff clear as day, and I would have noticed them earlier if my attention wasn't focused on the ground. Now, the icing on the cake. As I was struggling to process the situation I had walked into, I heard something moving in the area across from the ditch edge I was standing on. Now when I say I heard something moving, what I mean is that I heard the ground giving way to whatever was moving. The all too familiar sound of crushing leaf litter and twigs underfoot was nearby, in an otherwise silent atmosphere. However, it wasn't rhythmic, there was no stepping, it just came. Before I could rationalize what I was hearing, a large shadowy blur whizzed by, just in front of my eyes. It moved along the ground, and at lightning fast speed, darting between trees, as it was gone from my vision as quickly as it entered, leaving the sound of crushed ground as it went. My original thought was that it was wildlife, a kangaroo specifically, yes I'm Australian, but no animal moves that fast. I'd never been so scared in my life. As much as I wanted to move or scream for help, I was paralyzed. I knew my friend Paul wouldn't be more than 100 meters away, and that he was carrying a knife, in case we got jumped, and that's all I could think of at that time. I broke out of the crippling fear, and sprinted toward where I thought Paul would be. When he saw me, I was as white as a sheet, trembling, crying, panicking, and for a while I couldn't make any words. I told him what had happened, and he naturally didn't believe me, or rather, wanted to get a look for himself, even after my cautioning. I pointed him in the direction of the ditch hatch and the surrounding tar trees, and told him I was getting as far away from there as possible. He caught up with me a few minutes later, having seen more than enough to confirm my story, and being sufficiently spooked himself. We have never returned to that mountain range, and it is still the scariest ghost story I have. Telling it always leaves me scared. I'm sweating profusely after just having written this, to give you a sense of how malign that day's events were. Why did all this phenomena occur in the same location, and all at once? From noticing the hatch to sprinting away in terror from the mystery shadow was probably less than 10 seconds, but it felt an eternity. And before you ask, no I had not eaten any mushrooms. I understand the potential effects of some mushrooms, and would never jeopardize the quality of my forage like that. It was late at night and I really couldn't sleep, not that I was trying that much, and I felt a really sharp pain in my chest. I actually thought I was having a heart attack so I got up to get some painkillers from the bathroom. Once there and once I had taken them, I realized I actually needed to urinate. I remember it being to the later side of the second hour and that the window was cracked slightly which made a soft whistle haunt the room. I went back to the sink to wash my hands when a bright light started to shine outside. I practically threw myself towards the window and saw as this thing illuminated my back garden. I should probably add that there are no lights in my backyard so this was so surreal. This wasn't a yellow light bulb light either, it was a hard and sharp light and the garden seemed to scintillate with a bright white light. This was a sharp pain in my chest was going on this entire time but started to fade whole the light also faded and eventually stopped. I was left dumbfounded for a while, I have no idea what it was but I'm convinced it's linked to the supernatural. A few years ago, 2012 or 2013 I think since I was still in high school then, I was at a party with some friends and as the night goes on, maybe 11 to 12 at night, one of my friends and I go outside to have a cigarette. 
The second we get outside there's just this completely awful, foul smell. Like just blood, vomit, piss, and death all at once. Now this was somewhat the middle of nowhere so we just figured it was a dead animal and went on with having that cigarette. Less than a minute later we hear something moving in the dark and sure enough, a deer comes hobbling into the very edge of the porch light. So we just mention aw how cute and the like. But then I noticed something, one of its front legs was messed up in some way. And I'm talking like broken in multiple places messed up. So my friend and I are slightly off put by this, less than we should have been since drunk, and finish up our sig and go to head inside. However, right as we start to do that, one of the two porch lights goes pop and goes out. So now it's less light outside and this deer is back into the darkness. So, a bit giddily, we both do this like fake scared squeal at each other and turn around to go inside. And that's when we heard it. That undeniable sound of nails on the concrete patio. We both slowly turn around to see this hunched over, rotten coyote doing this very slow, very unnatural crawl towards us. We go from 0 to 600 paralyzed with fear almost instantly until another one of our friends playfully pulls us through the open door telling us to get back to the party. To this day, I have not experienced anything like that and it's one of the most horrifying things I've ever experienced. I don't have a history of mental illness beyond what I suspect is pretty ordinary. I saw a counselor for a while after a messy car accident a few years ago, and she was very useful. I also saw one back when being bullied at work in 2002, and she too was useful, giving me a few tools for keeping up my strength while that resolved until I found new work. But something I don't tell them is that every now and then I have a single standing hallucination that I'm sure isn't real, and pretty sure is the only hallucination I've experienced. When things are just peachy and mostly when I'm alone, a warm spring day with no people around and two more days off work, or out the back under my veranda and there's a summer storm approaching and the wind picks up, I'll see a black rabbit. It's less visible the closer it is to me, like it's just outside my vision. It's completely black from one end to the other. I notice it out of the corner of my eye and usually only see it hopping away. The closest it's been to me is a couple of yards away while I was taking photos in my backyard. I couldn't really see it until it got perhaps 25 feet away. I can't remember seeing its face, and it's rare. Maybe 50 times in my life I've seen it. I've seen it in every house I've lived in, country and city. I've seen it while on holiday in the most comfortable little forest cabin with my partner, and I've seen it in the living room of my mother's house after I woke up from a really warm comfortable sleep on the couch. I worried about it when I was younger, thinking it might be an indication of something deeper that would claim my sanity, but here I am at 52 and no other symptoms have shown. It's a long weekend, my partner is traveling and will be back tomorrow morning. The house is clean and warm and the sun is bright. I finished a really nice lunch, and then I saw my black bunny friend just an hour ago. At the kitchen window it hopped away to the end of the backyard, paused a bit with its back to me and washed its face. It scooted under the fence that's impossible to actually scoot under, and it disappeared. I'm reminded how good life is, and I'm thankful. I was traveling around in my car. I would just drive a few hours on my days off and see where I would end up. One night I was tired and ended up near a beach where there were vacation homes walking distance from the Atlantic. I was getting tired, past midnight, so I was looking for a side street to park and sleep till the morning. I was trying to find one not directly in front of occupied homes. I found an empty lot parallel with some homes that looks unoccupied, so I parked across the street. It was a nice night so I opened my hatch where I had blankets and looked at the stars a bit. I distinctly remember the moon being full. I was going through some things emotionally both relationally and personally, trying to figure out who I was going to be as an adult. I had felt peace and calm for the first time in a while. After a while I had to pee so I go out and went to find a bush. I'm walking back to my car and I see a fox come from behind the empty lot. I walk towards it slowly and call to it to come over. It looks at me and walks in an arc towards me and stops within arm's distance. I could have pet its head. I thought about it, but I didn't feel like it was appropriate. We look eye to eye and I feel as if he knows me. His look was unintimidated and gentle. I tell him it's a nice night as I look up at the moon. He seems to understand, but not because of my words. It felt like a while we were there but it was probably maybe almost two minutes. He scampers away and I tell him goodbye. He looks back at me from the brush line. I get back in my car and knew he was telling me something. I deciphered it eventually and now I have a fox tattooed on my right thigh. When I was younger, like 10 to 12, I used to camp a lot with my two buddies, Thomas and Jordan who lived in the same neighborhood. At the end of our cul-de-sac was a forest. Horse trails from the nearby farms became our bike trails. We used to hunt in this forest, there was a fairly large pond about 20 minutes deep, it was great. 
We'd go out about once a month, make a fire, eat s'mores, fish the pond, tell stories, laugh at Jordan trying to set up his tent solo, he never got the hang of it. One night I got rustled up. Thomas was tapping my head through the tent. I was mad as hell, got out and was about to yell at him when he hit me in the arm and put a finger to his mouth like be quiet. He had a kind of serious mean look on his face so I didn't say anything and he just turns to look across the pond and nods. It was the middle of the night and the moon was a sliver so I shouldn't have been able to see the whole way across the pond but clear as day there was a large wolf drinking directly across the pond from us. The thing looked like it emitting whitish blue light, I could see the area around it. It raised its head from the water and looked in our direction and then turned and trotted off. We could see the light of it fade as it made its way back to wherever it came from. Jordan was mad first that we didn't wake him then became convinced we were making it up to tease him. We camped out a lot the next couple weeks to try and see the thing again but we never did. Thomas knows we saw something supernatural but I'm not 100% sure. All I know is it was weird as fuck to see a glowing wolf, especially in our area where there aren't supposed to be any. When I was a child I spent most of my summers at various camps on the west coast. One summer found myself at a camp in the Angeles National Forest where the living arrangements were a kind of open air, roofed, platform cabin with paired beds on either end and a storage area in between. Usually kids were paired or quaded off to fill each one but there weren't enough so the counselors asked if anyone minded staying alone. I'd been there before so volunteered. Figured would get extra reading time in without having to worry about a flashlight in someone else's face. One evening found myself unable to sleep. We were in a heavily wooded area and the moon was full. Felt very zen watching the moon spin around the sky, tracking the progress against the nearest pine. Then I saw it. A wolf. Stepped out of the nearby trees and locked eyes with me. It was a silvery grey with darker grey streaks. And it was huge. Not Godzilla huge but far larger than any golden retriever or coyote that I'd seen. I froze. It froze. Fear and awe and peace played a massive tug of war with my insides. Don't honestly know how long we stared at each other. At some point I came out of the zen slash lupine hypnosis slash meditative state and decided that the wolf might need a blanket, looking back have no idea why my thought process would work this way but hey was a kid, so pulled my extra blanket out of my sleeping bag and spread it out on the empty mattress next to me on the platform. Then I curled up in my sleeping bag, closed my eyes, and went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning there were white and grey hairs on the extra blanket. When I told my story to the camp counselors they didn't believe me at first. Then they tried to convince me that I'd seen a coyote. Apparently our campsite was relatively close to an unused horse corral and they figured that's what brought the animal into the camp. But the coyote explanation didn't wash with me, I'd seen them before with my own eyes and that was not what had visited me the previous evening. The alternative theory was that it had been a very large, stray dog. That didn't work for me either, the animal I'd see was completely silent, and the nose slash muzzle was far more pronounced. My friend and I occasionally went to the gym together whenever I felt like going. It was in the next town over and I would usually pick him up and drive from his house. I live in an extremely rural area, so in order to get the town we would have to travel over a decently sized mountain, not the only option to get there but it was a shortcut off the beaten path. We get there, do the workout, and leave around 10pm. As we are driving home, we were talking not really paying attention to our surroundings. On the way down this steep mountain road, we rounded a fairly sharp turn. In the middle of our lane around the bend was a humongous red hair beast blocking our lane. It was driving pretty fast, probably around 50 miles per hour plus, so I swerved and slammed on my brakes. We drifted for probably a solid 5 seconds before I regained control of my car. We looked at each other in horror, and both asked what the fuck was that. I decided to check out what exactly that beast was, because I have never in my life seen some that large just casually in the middle of a road. I quickly returned to where the beast should have been but it was gone. It was weird because it had nowhere to go. One side of the road was the steep mountainside going up, and the other side was just a huge drop off with no visible evidence of said creature. We were freaked out so we got home as quickly as possible. We don't really have any large wildlife besides deer and black bear near me, so it was strange to see a 7 foot tall reddish beast. On this same mountain on the way home from another visit, or on the same bend another weird thing happened. Same scenario except my friend was looking at his phone and didn't see what I did. Another bipedal greyish thing was just with large appendages was trying to climb the steep mountainside and just looked at the vehicle with large yellow eyes. It didn't look human and no one lives anywhere near the mountain. It is safe to say I'll never go on that road again. The most surreal and incredible animal related experience I ever had was with a sea turtle. I have no way of describing what was going through my head as it started to happen, 
but I'll tell the story and maybe it'll help. So I am scuba diving in Hawaii with my mom, and we're near Maui but took a boat ride for around an hour to get to a smaller island with scuba spots. I left my mom to adventure on her own while I followed a sea turtle as it moseyed along the reef doing turtle things. I stopped following it briefly to look at this crazy black fish with electric blue piping decorating its fins. I turned around and the sea turtle I had been following was gone, but a different sea turtle was there. I am 100% positive the sea turtle I turned to see was not the one I was following and watching, because the one I was following and watching had a pretty striking shell patterning and no sediment or grime on its shell. It's worth noting that there was a storm the evening beforehand, and the reef wasn't as vivid or as spectacular as the photos usually make them out to be, because the storm had churned the water and deposited a solid layer of grime in the reef itself. Anyways, I turned around and there's this other sea turtle behind me, it's kind of faced away from me, so I can see its shell from the back, and it is caked in algae and grime. This turtle is looking behind me, looking at me, and I remember thinking, damn I wish I could wipe the gunk of this dude's shell. And as if in response to my thought this turtle turns and swims toward me without breaking eye contact. This turtle isn't like looking near me or around me or past me, this sea turtle is straight at me, straight into my eyes. I felt physically incapable of looking away from this animal, and he, or she, just kept getting closer and closer. The turtle gets less than an arm's length away from my face, and turns and places its muck-ridden shield directly in front of me, I could have touched its shell without extending my arm in the slightest. The turtle turned and looked at me, and just floated there, staring back at me for about a minute and a half. I kept glancing between its grimy shell and its eyes staring directly into mine, and I was blown away by the deep greens I could see on its shell hiding below the muck and grime. I really, really wanted to reach out and just wipe away the top layer of grime, it was thick and had to be uncomfortable, or at least a little annoying, but I respect nature too much to assume I know what's best, so I didn't. Turtle got bored or had other turtle stuff to do, and the turtle slowly swam away, but it kept looking back at me and it swam, directly into my fucking eyes. It was insanely surreal and the encounter kept me awake for a couple nights. Late to chime in, and not sure this fits with exactly what you're looking for, but I used to see shadow animals often. Mostly as a child, but definitely continued well into my 20s. It usually happened while driving in a car, usually at night, but would also happen during the day but it happened almost every time I drove somewhere. It could be a deer, a dog, a cat, a rabbit. Usually I could tell what it was by the size and movement, not from the clear visual of it. As a kid I used to have the feeling that these were animals that had died being hit on the road over the years. It actually affected my early driving days, as I would be breaking for shadow animals that weren't actually there. Now in my 30s, it doesn't really happen to me much anymore, although I do now seem to have a pretty accurate ability to sense when an animal is going to dart into the road within minutes of it happening. I usually adjust my driving when I get that feeling, take myself off cruise slash slow down, and I'm always thankful I heated the feeling when a dog slash deer does jump into the road a few minutes later. When I was little, I was grabbed and scared by this absolutely terrifying creature sometimes when I was left alone. It was maybe about 4 feet tall, resembled E.T., had black, dark circles for eyes, had leathery skin, long fingers and claws. For so many years, I was absolutely terrified as a result of experiences I had with it. I remember being absolutely terrified for my mum to leave me alone in my room with the lights out seeing as I couldn't reach the light switch to scare away the creature, it always seemed to flee whenever anyone else came into the, the room or whenever all of the lights were on. There was an occasion where my mum left me in my room with the lights out to help me get over the fear for about 15 minutes and I remember being absolutely terrified as I watched this thing come out of the dark soon after she left. I started yelling for mum in the other room but she just ignored me and thought I was being melodramatic or making it up. I very vividly remember it grabbed me with long, gnarled fingers and took me under the bed with it. I still remember how the fingers felt around my throat. My mom came back out of the kitchen to give me some hot chocolate as a reward for being good and conquering my fear, can't believe she thought that would do the trick, but she found me under the bed, shaking, sobbing and with soiled pants. She asked what happened and I said it dragged me under the bed. Soon after, we moved out of that house and I never saw it again. She told me that even though she's very no bullshit and has never really believed in the paranormal, that experience really shook her and she had a weird feeling in the pit of her stomach that something wasn't right and she always felt terrible for leaving me alone with it. I saw a pterosaur flying over the coast somewhere south of Santa Cruz, California. I was out camping illegally on the beach with my then girlfriend, a girl who was truly my first love. I told her that I loved her for the first time that night. Shortly after, I saw an immense shadow on the horizon. 
It was a very clear summer night with little cloud cover. This thing was fucking enormous. I would estimate its wingspan to be somewhere in the range of 13 to 18 feet. As it neared us, I noticed its bizarre flight pattern. I have seen various large raptors in flight, including condors, hawks, golden bald eagles and various falcons. This thing moved like none of them. It got closer and I noticed a strange elongated head. What's more, I was able to observe that its wings looked somehow leathery, not the feathers of a bird. I pointed it out to her and she saw it too. She agreed that it was definitely not a bird. We were both sober and alert, and I would say both fairly rational people. She joked that it was her guardian and that it was watching us. Then, slow and deliberate, it flapped its way behind a cloud and disappeared, but not before flashing its profile in the face of the moon. I am skeptical of cryptids, spirit animals, etc. but I really have no rational explanation for what I saw that night. Truly one of the most bizarre experiences of my life. The first time was while rock climbing out in the park. The area was known for bears and the odd cougar, although it's pretty frequently traveled so not a big concern for animals. My dad was belaying me and my brother was off wandering about, we were both pretty young, when we heard this bone chilling screeching start. It sounded like a murder was happening. My dad yelled for my brother and I started to repel down instantly, white knuckled in fear. My brother popped up on the trail, safe, but the screeching continued. We hightailed it back to the parking lot, meeting lots of other people returning with the same thing in mind. Turned out to be a cougar in heat making mating calls, look up cougar screeching and you will see the horrendous noise they make. The second time, was again out in the woods. This time while camping. I was deep asleep in my sleeping back and tent with my dad and brother beside me when all of a sudden I woke up, wide awake. Instantly I knew something felt off, so I prodded my dad awake. I heard some noise around our campsite, and instantly recognized it as a black bear only species where I live, I whispered to my dad that there was a bear in our campsite. He poked around for a bit but there was no garbage or food for him, so he left shortly. But man, laying in a tent like a warm sausage roll snack with a bear right there is pretty terrifying. The third time was when me and a group of friends from college decided to have some edibles and go for a midnight walk in our local park. It's a densely forested hill, they call it a mountain, that has some rocky bluffs on it and some cool trails to walk in. At one point we were walking a bit off the trail when we heard something stomping around the forest. We all instantly stopped talking and began trying to spot whatever it was with our phone lights. Two of my friends instantly wanted to turn back but I wanted to prove a point. I started chasing after it and my friends followed sweet and we chased after whatever was making the noise. The weird part was, we never did see what was making the noise, and we chased it for a good 15 minutes over stumps, down hills and a few small cliffs. But we heard it until we hit the main trail leading out of the park. Also the fact that whatever it was didn't run away from six people with flashlights yelling, and crashing through the bushes. When I was in my early 20s about 15 years ago, a mate and I were walking home late at night after a party. Full disclosure we were a bit drunk and high but not too far gone as to be sloppy you know. Anyway we decided to cut through some bush in order to get to the train station quicker. It was night but it was a clear night, the moon and stars were out and visibility was pretty good plus there is a dedicated footpath through the bush. So a few hundred meters into the bush we see a small maybe 2-3 to three foot humanoid creature on the path maybe 50-60 to 60 meters ahead, it was just standing there in the moonlight kinda hunched over with its hands on the ground in front of it looking off into the bush. It must have sensed us because after a second or two it turned around, looked at us and immediately fucked off into the bush. It had pale white skin and glowing red eyes. As soon as we saw it my mate and I looked at each other and got the fuck out of there. It was only on the way out we noticed how quiet the bush was, it was absolutely silent. Normally even at night you can hear birds, insects and lizards whatever shuffling around in the leaves or grass. A few years later my mate and I worked out it was most likely a Malingi from Aboriginal folklore. This was in the early 2000s in South East Queensland Australia. Not exactly a spirit animal or ghost, but I think I met a witch. There are some Roma and Sinti women here in Germany that claim that they can read minds in your future and what husband you're gonna choose blah blah blah. It's a well-known scam so usually I don't engage with them, they just bullshit you with general things you like to think about yourself like you are a very good person but you are too nice and other shit like this. In the end, they demand money. But this lady was different. I once was forced to ride the train because my car broke down and since I work at the airport I had to ride very early on. There was just me and this lady in the train. She wasn't wearing all this mystical shot, she was dressed in a black jeans and black short, nothing to fancy. But she would whisper stuff. First, I ignored her but as the curious shit that I am, I started listening. 
and I fucking froze, because she was whispering things about me. Things no one knows. For example, I have a very irrational fear of going blind someday. I don't know why I'm just afraid of it. Also, she was whispering about the loss of a very good friend of mine. Things she couldn't know. She didn't face me when she whispered it she just looked at the ground and not once looked up. To this day I wonder if I was just sleep deprived or if a total stranger actually really knew about my deepest and irrational fears. 10 or so years ago my family and I went camping with our family friends. We live in Western America, so the place we went camping was very rocky. Anyway, my friend, his brother, and I left the campsite and was walking down the road. As we were walking down the road we see this parting in the rocks, behind a large tree was this wooden box with a white blanket draped over it. Curious, we all ran over to it and lifted the blanket off the box. Inside the box was all these really tiny bones, like bird bones or chipmunk bones, maybe a small dog. Either way there were lots of them. My friend was to the side of me and his brother was in front of us. We were all gathered around this box. When we all hear a rock smack against a tree, I turn around and look at the tree that was hiding the box. And it's swishing back and forth from the impact, it was a pretty thick tree. Only the top was shaking as the base was too thick to shake. And I see as this large rock fall to the ground. All three of us kind of laugh and are like okay. Who threw the rock? Then we realize none of us could have thrown the rock without the others noticing. So we book it to the campsite, I'm talking like a mile of running without a break. Fastest mile I've ever ran. We tell our parents, friends and I are all freaked out. So our parents go out to find this box, with a loaded gun on each of the four parents, and yeah. I don't know who threw the rock to this day, but the police was called, friend's uncle is a cop. He and his cop friends came up, and the box was taken away. I don't know what bones were in the box. And after that my friends and I were not allowed to leave the campsite without a parent with a gun. So I guess our parents were spooked. I give this belongs here as I don't know what threw it. Could have been a ghost, Bigfoot, some person hiding in the woods, some sort of animal I don't know what animal can throw rocks. A monkey? I don't know. Scared me enough that until just recently I would tear up when thinking about. I don't know, but I definitely used to. There's a ghost town called Bodhi that my mom had been to once in college. While walking through the graveyard she was suddenly overcome with immense grief, like the grief of a mother losing her child, and it was over as quickly as it had started. This was ages before she was an actual mom. She hadn't been back until me and my brother were born, and in our teens. She decided to take us, because Bodhi is a pretty rad place. Our last stop in Bodhi before heading back was the graveyard, the same one from when she was in college. She passes by through most of the place without incident, but when she got close to a small white hedgestone, it was tears galore, yelling about how it happened again. The grave weirded me out a bit so I didn't want to get too close, but I'm sure it was the hedgestone of a child. I'm confident she didn't even read it. By the time she got out of the graveyard, she felt fine, but a bit shaken that it had occurred twice. My mom is not spiritual or religious at all, though she keeps an open mind to those kind of things. She's not the kind of person who psychs themselves out and imagines things. I grew up in suburban Pennsylvania, so there were patches of woods surrounding most houses. When I was over at a new friend's house I convinced her to go explore the woods behind her house. We were probably 9 or 10, and we got lost. At first it was fun because we thought we might find something cool. But then we both got a bit scared and stopped talking to each other, just trying to make our way through the woods. At some point we both stopped and looked off into the distance. Deer are very common in our area and I knew very early on all about them, I was a huge animal nerd. But I swear I was looking at an elk. It was huge and hefty, and had way thicker fur than the local white-tailed deer. I just remember looking at it and it looking back at us. We said nothing to each other but I changed directions and my friend silently followed me. We then ended up in the backyard of a house that my friend recognized and we actually weren't that far from her house. Once we got back to her bedroom she asked me if I saw the elk and I felt immense relief that she saw it too, we even looked it up in the encyclopedia to make sure. But there's really just no geographical way that we saw an elk. When he was somewhere around 14 he was on a beach vacation with his dad and that side of the family. He had an argument with his dad, normal, the man is a sociopath, and my husband stormed out to walk on the beach late at night to cool off. He was totally alone listening to the wind and waves when he felt strange and started hearing his name whispered in the wind. Out of the corner of his eyes he saw these huge black figures moving through the waves and the dunes on either side of him. This went on for about 5 minutes before he heard something walking behind him, he turned to see nothing and when he turned back around there was this massive dog-like thing in front of him, 
His exact description is as follows about 12 foot tall dog like figure made of living blackness, silver sharp teeth and its eyes were an evil red. There was on either side another one about 8 foot and a 6 foot one, with smaller ones scattered all behind them. It wasn't just black, it was like it was devoid of light. As soon as his eyes fell on it he felt a pain in the middle of his chest right under his breastbone, he says like someone squeezing my soul the big one opened its mouth and breathed out a growl and my husband just turned tail and ran. He ran all the way back to the house and could feel hot breath on his neck. Everyone knew something had happened because he doesn't scare easy, he spent many many nights in the woods hunting. About three months later, after living in fear, he decided to confront this demon. He was in a neighborhood and came up to a huge hedge. He felt the same chest pain and this thing walked out from the hedge. He looked straight at it and said I command you in the name of Jesus, my Savior, to leave me alone. Be as far from me as the east is the west. Be gone. I'm paraphrasing. He never saw the thing again and never felt that fear again. He started tensing up just helping me write this and started shaking. He doesn't mind sharing this story but it spooks him every time. I've read him stories and showed him pictures of black dogs slash black shuck slash mondi do and he says this was different. I've tried searching for similar stories but I couldn't find anything related. I feel like maybe if he found someone who had a similar experience he would feel better.